China, on the other hand, has taken a very different path. China has stuck to a zero COVID uh, methodology. Now, uh, the upside of that is that it could be that it could be that um, that China, through the zero COVID policy, will manage to hold out uh, while the rest, while COVID in the rest of the world slowly evolves into something weak, and by the time China opens up, uh, COVID will be so weak that it won't be that it won't be an issue for, um, uh, you know, for the Chinese. But right now, China has the zero COVID policy, which is unreportedly, un un unreported, but looks like it is slowly crippling its economy. Uh, slowly cripple, uh, crippling China's economy. So, for example, right now, uh, there's a city of 13 million people, Xi'an. Xi'an is a city with the famous terracotta warriors. I think I told you yesterday or the day before that Xi'an is a city that I, I gave a talk at. Uh, uh, you know, the historical, historically, it is the capital of the Chinese uh, ancient empire. 13 million people. It's shut down. People are not allowed to leave home unless they get special permits, groceries are delivered, uh, grocery workers and all essential workers are working with N95 masks and with gloves. Uh, it's as if they're in hospitals. And they keep going city by city, shutting everything down. So uh, what you have is the zero, uh, and of course the, the, the Chinese vaccine was very inefficient very ineffective from the beginning. Uh, and uh, China is in a real mess because they, um, let's see, let me just do something here. Uh, because they will continue. Uh, they will not gain natural immunity. They will not get vaccine immunity. They will continue COVID will continue to attack. And as a consequence, this is going to be a continuing problem for China. So in spite of the fact that everybody hailed China for its success, supposed success, in shutting down uh, Wuhan and uh, in avoiding uh, large numbers of deaths as a consequence of COVID, these rolling lockdowns of cities, of whole neighborhoods, of whole areas are doing damage to the Chinese economy, doing damage to the Chinese people, and there's no end to it. There's no end to it. So, you know, it'll be interesting. We will see, we will keep track of COVID's evolution in China. But that is not the only problem China is facing. It's not the only problem, uh, uh, problem China is facing. Uh, China is facing significant economic problems. It is significantly increasing its regulation and control of the technology industry. Tech companies that seemed like they were on a roll, that nothing could stop them, are now struggling. Uh, many of those companies, some of those companies have left the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, but even in, um, in, in, in Beijing, uh, Chinese technology stocks are struggling, have been struggling. Huge amount of value has been lost. Authoritarianism doesn't work. China is going to learn this the hard way. Authoritarianism doesn't work. You've got massive problems of uh, real estate investment uh, in real estate companies that are going bankrupt, but it's not just the companies. It's a lot of people who put down money, uh, deposits on new apartments, who will never see those apartments, who will never see those real estate projects. 
There are now a number of skyscrapers that will never be finished, that have been started and never be finished. They are, China's facing real economic struggles, real economic challenges. Walmart, um, Western companies going to China right now uh, are facing the challenge of boycotts. Uh, what's happening is uh, because of the Biden administration saying that they would, um, uh, wow, all right, uh, if, if companies are doing a business in, um, what's the, what's that district in China, Xinjiang, Xinjiang, that is the uh, district in Western China where the Uyghurs are being put in concentration camps and uh, where they are accused massive of violations of human rights against the Muslim occupants of these regions. Um, many companies, many countries, including the United States, are putting sanctions on entities that trade with companies that produce in the Xinjiang uh, area as a consequence. Uh, Walmart, for example, in China has said that it will stop buying products from Chinese companies based in, or, or doing business in uh, or producing product in Xinjiang. As a consequence, Walmart is being boycotted. So business for these American entities is not good in China because of these bon pronounced Xing, Xing Shong. Xing Shong? All right. It doesn't look like, okay. I believe Wanda Freeman. No way, it's pronounced Xing Shong. Xing Shong. Um, and uh, you, you've got Walmart thinking of leaving China, Walmart uh, reducing its investments in China. And in general, uh, Walmart is struggling in China not just because of that, but also because consumption, Chinese consumers have not seen a full recovery, have not seen a real recovery as a consequence of, right, as a consequence of uh, COVID. And of course, that's only gonna be hampered even more with lockdowns like what we're seeing in Xi'an and other parts of China. So China is starting to be a bit of an economic mess. The Chinese are gonna loosen monetary policy going into next year. That could suggest in inflation in China, which would, uh, you know, uh, create all kinds of internal problems in China. And then the question is, what are the Chinese people, how are they going to respond to economic problems? How are they going to respond to less freedom, more and more encroachment on their privacy and on their freedoms, and very little economic growth? We haven't seen that combination in modern China ever before. And if there's going to be an uprising, if there's going to be a backlash against this regime, it's going to come from the Chinese middle class who are used to at least some level of uh, freedom that are definitely used to ever increasing opportunities to get wealthy and suddenly they're seeing all of these being constraints you're seeing you cannot you can see stories uh, for example from the guardian uh, this is a, this is just a headline from economic miracle to mirage will china's gdp ever overtake the us didn't see those kind of uh, headlines particularly in The Guardian. Guardian's a very left-wing newspaper. Two, three years ago, when everybody was just, was just going, you know, gaga over the supposed miracle of uh, state capitalism, state capitalism, capitalism in quotes, um, uh, uh, you know, the, 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 what the left viewed as proof that you could get massive economic growth and have central planning and have a big government. 
you're seeing China starting to restrict its companies from IP, doing uh, overseas IPOs. Um, you're seeing uh, over and over again, right? You're seeing, oh, it was the funny story this week that China uh, complained to the United Nations that it had to shift the location of one of its satellites because uh, of Elon Musk's satellites, that the satellites were, were sat not, 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 its, um, not one of its satellites, the space station, the Chinese have a space ch station. They had a shift because it was going to collide with one of Elon Musk's uh, SpaceX's satellites. So uh, uh, it, it had a complaint to the United Nations about that. You go on and on about the worst relationship that China has with the U.S., the worst relationship China has with the West more broadly, the more difficult it is for this administration to hide the low economic growth, the economic struggles, the, uh, the, stagnant, uh, the stagnant living wages, the stagnant... Uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, quality and standard of living that the Chinese are engaged in. So, uh, you know, everybody's so afraid of China. I, I just saw an op-ed in the Washington Post by Hugh Hewitt. You know Hugh Hewitt, the, um, the, I guess he's a radio commentator on radio, at least in California. I think he's national syndicated, conservative. And it's all about China's this massive threat to America. It's not. China's poor as compared to us. We'll talk about military spending in a second. But China is not a military threat to the United States. China is not, quote, an economic threat to the United States. China is a country struggling. China is a country struggling to keep up. People say China is ahead of us on certain technologies. Maybe they are right now. It won't last. China's crackdown on technology companies won't allow that to happen. Yes, they have a lot of scientists. Yes, they have many, many more engineers than we do, many multiples of the engineers we do. But they can't innovate. They can't be creative. They can't think out of the box because the Chinese government won't let them. So China is no threat to the U.S., not because we don't import, indeed, uh, we only seem to be importing more and more Chinese goods. We only seem to have a greater and greater appetite to buy Chinese goods. That was true, uh, you know, during the Trump years when he put tariffs and yet trade deficit, which don't mean anything, only grew with China. We became more dependent on Chinese imports, not less dependent on Chinese imports um, uh, under Trump, and, and that's, that that's continued to increase under Biden. That's not the issue. The issue is internally in China the economy is collapsing, not because of anything we're doing, not because of anything we've done. Just look at the numbers. Thank you for listening or watching The Iran Brooks Show. If you'd like to support the show, we make it as easy as possible for you to trade with me. You get value from listening. You get value from watching. Show your appreciation. You can do that by going to yourownbookshow.com slash support, by going to Patreon, subscribe star, locals, and just making a appropriate contribution uh, on any one of those uh, any one of those channels. Also, if you'd like to see the Yaron Book Show grow, please consider sharing our content and of course subscribe. Press that little bell button right down there on YouTube so that you get an announcement when we go live. And for you, those of you who are ready subscribers and those of you who are ready supporters of the show, thank you. I very much appreciate it.